Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Art as Well. This is an Art as Well with a slight difference in that we're going to be talking to Margot Banks, but it's the occasion of the launch of her uh, documentary, A Day in the Life of Margot Banks. So we thought, rather than simply show it, that we'd have a little intro, chat to Margot um, about her, her work and how, how she's been since we've spoken to her last, which I think was about two years ago, easily mm -hmm. two years ago. Um, and then we're going to show the, the the film. And after that, we'll ask you all to, excuse me, we'll ask you all to join in and participate um, in a sort of a Q&A after that. All right. We'll keep it within the hour today. So let's start off by saying good morning to Margot. Good morning, Margot. How are you? I, I'm very well, thank you. Good morning to everybody. And thank you very much for being here. And thank very you, good. Alan. Very good. Thanks, Margot. Um, so, Margot, how have you been? It's been two years, I think, has it? Since we we did the episode with you, it has. I thought it was even longer than that, but maybe it wasn't too. I I've been fine, busy, mm. busy life, busy painting. Yeah, life is good. I have no complaints. Absolutely. Yeah. And you you had a, a solo exhibition not so long ago, didn't you? I did in the, the in the Solomon Gallery this uh, in Dublin. Yeah, this summer. Yeah, I was very happy with it. It went well. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, and, and I was and last, was it last night or the night before in the Solomon for the opening of their yeah. group show? So I was in at that. Um, so what we'll do is we will actually show uh, the film now okay. and then we'll, we'll open it up to the floor afterwards uh, to all the people who have joined us. Okay. My name is Margot Banks and I was born in Dublin and I'm an artist. interested in art my father was very interested in art um and my grandmother used to do those kind of tapestry things do you know them where you sew bits of material together and make yeah. a little picture yes um that was my grand on my father's side so art the art business comes from my father's side of the family all right okay um and did your brothers and sisters yeah none of them were into art no oh, i was the yeah. only one okay. but what, an old memory of mine is in national school was um the teacher saying to my mother, do, do you know that she's good at art? And um, I don't know if my mother didn't realise it. but uh, So I never didn't do art one way or another. Yeah. I always drew or painted. Or sculpture, I did sculpture for years. Sure. Yeah. And were you influenced by a teacher or anything like that, that that sort of gave you the encouragement to continue? There was a guy called uh, Henry Sharp. Um, I, I had no idea what happened to him. I was only 13 when I started going to classes that he did in Marlborough Street, I think it was. He did oil painting classes and my mother allowed me to go into that on the bus mm -hmm. on myself at night time by myself. Um, so he would have had an influence on me. I don't remember even how long I did that, for maybe a year or two. Yes. But I went then to uh, live in Spain when I was 17. Yeah. So that then had a... It was like completely different world 
going there at the time. Um, great country for art. Yeah. And I, I always, even while I was there, I always uh, painted. I was painting then. Are you? Yeah. yeah. And I would sell a few things. There was a local guy, a Spanish guy, used to sell some paintings for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all the years I was there, I did art. How long were you there? 14 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, and my, yes. I married a yeah. Spaniard. Yes. And um, when I came back here, uh, the kids were very small, and I knew I, I had to do some form of art. I couldn't not do it, but I knew I didn't have the headspace with uh, three small kids to um, to do painting. I didn't have the room or the headspace yeah. for it. Yeah. So I joined the um, North Strand Tech, yeah. and I did. I was going to do the wheel to do the ceramics, yeah. and uh, I loved it. But And I had a fantastic teacher, a guy called Michael Brett, who was also a wonderful painter, and he... Uh, talked me into you in, into doing sculpture instead with the clay, so I, I spent the next thirteen or fourteen years doing that. That little piece there behind you was <clears> one of the uh, that got into the RHA years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was one of the first pieces I did. Beautiful. Um, so I was a long time doing that, and then one summer with uh, two, two, three friends of mine who were, we were all into art and we were all doing ceramics. We um, the, the tech was closed, so we said, oh, what do we, what do, we do now for the summer that's arty? Mm -hmm. And one of the women, Selma McCormack, had um, a studio in the back of her garden. I said, well, we paint. I said, oh, yeah, I hadn't painted since Spain. And from the very first brush stroke, I said, I'm back doing this. This is really what I should be doing. Yes. So yes. That's, yeah. that's when I went back to painting. Yeah, but a big animal fan, a big crow fan, mm -hmm. do you know? Yes. Uh, I have, no, I wouldn't say they're pet magpies, I can't say they are, but I know them. Uh, I know they're down at the end of the garden, and the tree there on the left, and um, I'd be putting out all the stale bread, all that kind of stuff for the, for the birds, yeah. always. And I'd call them. And then, they're now they're so smart, by the time I get back up to the house, I know they're down already, do you know? So they know if I go out and call them that I'm going to throw out something. I feed them scraps, yeah. yeah. Left over for dinner, you know, whatever goes out to the birds. Everything goes out to the and birds. Would you then sketch them or? I, I have uh, photographed them. Or yeah. there's a fantastic place for rooks, mm -hmm. which is on the way to Kerry because we go to Kerry every year. Yeah. Um, the boys and myself mm -hmm. still go, my grandkids. Um, we, there's a place in Adair. There's a big kind of pa uh, park on the left hand side when you're driving through a dare, and there's loads and loads of rooks, which I really like. Mm. They, they're really prehistoric looking. And they, uh, we've gone in there, Daniel took loads, like click, 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 click. So I've millions of photographs yeah. of rooks, yeah. yeah. So I've used so, them a lot. So when you're doing um, a drawing of, of say, rooks, yeah. for, for instance, would you have a number of references that you'd work to? Or, or, or to inspire you in yes. terms of movement or whatever. You know. I would in the sense of, I start drawing at whatever kind of shape or mm. feeling that I want to get to it. But inevitably, even if you're doing it very loose, you can't have a leg coming out where it doesn't belong. Yes. So I would regularly have to say, no, oh, better now, hold on, what way should that lie? And then I'd go through all these, all references that I have. Yes. And I have loads of them on mm. every animal that I draw. Yeah. I would have references. So, yeah. Yeah. um. Uh, the composition would always be my own, but I, I, I inevitably have to check. Yeah. You know, how will I do those feathers? Like, mm -hmm. what way do those tail feathers go? Do you know, yes. That kind of thing. Yes. And do you, do you have a favourite animal that you particularly like? To draw. To draw, yeah. To draw is probably, is probably the wolf, mm -hmm. would be my favourite one to draw. Yes. Um, and crows. But I, oh, and the hairs, of course, the hairs. You're very well known for oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my father was Tommy Banks, who was a footballer. He played for Dublin. He was um, a chemist by profession. And my mother is Kathleen Barry, or Kach Kathleen de Barra, as she was known, uh, from Tiramoyle, County Kerry. Uh, she worked in the civil service initially, and then, of course, lost her job when she got married, not even when she had children, but when she got married, she had to leave her job. And apropos of that, actually, many, many years later, when my father died, that was in 1980, my mother, who was then in her late 50s, 
marched into the Department of Finance and demanded her job back. You know, and she got it, but she herself died a year later. So it was quite sad. But anyway, that's, yeah, my mum and my dad. Um, my, my father really didn't have that much interest in his family, so, you know, we didn't, we didn't really talk about it that much. But my mother was steeped in history about where she came from, which was uh, Tiramoy in County Kerry. She came from an all as a Gaelic speaking family and her parents were both teachers. And they ran this tiny little school uh, across the road from their house. And this, this is their house. This one, this photograph here. This is the house of the field in Tiramoy, which is really up the side of a mountain before you come to Carseline in uh, Deverra Peninsula. So yeah, this was the house and directly across the road from the house was the two-room school. And she, uh, in this photograph, yeah, I just think it is so nice to look at it because I love looking at the two guys out saving the hay in, in that field. I think it's wonderful. Uh, this field is still there. The school is still there, but it's a ruin because this photograph dates back to before the 1920s. And, um, but the school is gone. Or the, not the school, sorry, the house is gone. And the field is there exactly as it is there in that photograph. It's still the exact same, but nobody has ever lived there since. No, there's no buildings there. Um, but my mother talked about it so much that that I go nearly as a pilgrimage regularly when I go to Kerry, as do my siblings. We're all the same in that way. We all have a deep affection for this part of Kerry. So I did. So that's really when I started selling paintings. And that was not in the late 90s. That was when that was, yeah. So, um, but at this stage, I was still working full time. The boys were all still here at home and, and I was working full time. And it wasn't to my last job, which was in the United Arts Club, where I was the administrator for six years. That was 2000 and the year 2001 I started. And I left in 2006 because at that stage um, I had decided that with uh, I was always doing art at night time. I never didn't do it. And I was selling and I was doing OK. I decided not, I either take the chance now, it's now or never, the boys were going up, two of them were gone, there was one still here at home, but um, the other two were looking after themselves. And uh, so I took a chance, gave up full-time work and started just to paint all day instead of painting every night. Since 2002, I've had solo shows with Cathy Boyle from the Blue Leaf in Fairview. I've also had a few solo shows with the Origin Gallery with Noelle Campbell Sharp and shows with the Green Lane Gallery in Dingle with Susan Callery. I'm now uh, represented by the Solomon Gallery in Dublin and um, I've had two solo shows with Tara and the Solomon and this opening tonight will be my third. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. How are you? I'll chat inside. And you've, I forget everything else yes. when I'm in the studio. I forget oh, any problems that I might have goes yeah, yeah. because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. That's a, a, a kind of almost meditative yeah. state. Yeah. 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 It's like doing a crossword puzzle. Mm. I'm sure you'd be the same. You know? And you're looking at this and saying, how the hell do I fix that? You know, you know that you need to do to put something into and then the whole puzzle works. Yes. Um, or 
So that's for me what it's like. So I don't have room to think about what are the kids doing or what are the grandkids doing or my sister, do you know? Yeah. I just, so that, that's the great thing about it for me. So the, the build up is, is, is sort of therapeutic in a certain way. Yes. You know what you're at, oh, yeah. what you have to do. Yeah. And forget about everything else. Yeah, so that's what I find having a solo show is actually very good. And I try to have one every year because then that, that gives me months of concentrating on that. And have you veered away from using oils? I have veered away from using oils because uh, I'm really looking forward, to be honest now, when I'm finished the work that I'm doing now, which are all, it's all drawing based. Yeah. Uh, what I want to do is get myself two really big canvases and painting oils. Yeah. But you see, with the drawings, these ones like this, it either works or doesn't work pretty fast. And there's no change, you can change it a little bit, but there's not a huge amount you can do. Yes. So it either works or it goes into the bin. Mm. With an oil painting, I'll be, I can move it around with my hand, literally, yeah. you know? Yes. And, and I'll go, oh yeah, I kind of like the way, mm. the effect, that effect that you get. But it'll, um, yeah, I could be working for a month on two months on a painting. Yeah. So you need really time to do that. Sure. Yes, I know. I know. So that's what I wanted. That's my next mm. uh, project for myself. That'll be totally for myself mm. to do that. Yeah. No, I think. I mean, what, what's wonderful, I think, about your work is that, and, and I'm not trying to be a give a yeah. critique or anything like it. Yeah. Is, is that it's so recognisable as being your yeah. work. Yeah, I didn't know that until yeah. it, it, pe few people would have said that to me. Yes, yes. I, I wouldn't have known yeah, that, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But you've seen the I showed you images of the paintings the last time. I have done a good, a good few paintings. Mm. That's an oil painting that, of that, um, that woman's face. Yes. That's an oil painting. Tell us about Kerry and the Kerry, significance of Kerry to you. The significance of Kerry uh, to me and, and my siblings and my children. <laughs> my grandchildren now at this stage, would be that um, my mother was from a place called Tiramoyle, which is up the back of beyonds, past uh, Carsevine. Alan Skellig's would be on the other side. It was up the side of a mountain. My mother was a great storyteller, and um, she died quite young. She was only 60 when she died. And, um, but she regaled us with stories. Anyway, she used to go on holidays to Alan Skellig's. That's where that photograph out there is. That's her standing outside her cousin's her, her aunt, the shop that her aunt has, which was a functioning shop up to about 10 years ago. No, be about 15 years ago. Yeah. All those years. Yeah. Anyway, it's, um, she used to go there on holidays. And then, so when we were children, she brought us on holidays mm. to the same place, to Balance Skelly's. And then, but we went every year, but the stories she used to tell were just fantastic. And um, so that's where our love of Kerry came. Then when I came back from Spain to live here, but my mother had only died the year before, I um, started immediately, just I felt at home if I went to Balanskelligs. So myself and my sister would go every year and we would bring my boys in the back of the car. There used to be some trips, yes. the three of them fighting, because it used to take seven hours so to get to Balanskelligs. It's a long journey. They'd be killing one another in the back of the car. Yeah. And um, with pillows there and Lego and everything to keep them going. Mm -hmm. But that's what we did. We went to Banaskelix every summer and we still go every year. So um, as soon as my grandchildren started, we started bringing them. And now like we're, I'm booked to go, I'm, I'd rent a house for my cousin. Mm -hmm. So we're booked to go now in, in July. After your exhibition? After the exhibition, yeah. Do you paint when you're there? I draw. I draw, I don't paint, no. But I have been to Kilrelig many of the time, which is the centre of Kilrelig is in Balanskelligs. Yeah. Kilrelig itself is outside Balanskelligs, right. but the, the gallery and Noel's place mm. is in Bal is in Bal in the village, in the Dungagan, village. which is a right. tiny little yeah. village. We've You've been, been there. Yeah. You've both been yeah. and then you know. Yeah. So I've been to Kilrelig many of the time. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Can, can you recall a moment where you thought to yourself, do you know what, this is working? I can, well, like, I'll tell you what I can recall very well, walking on my way going to the arts club to work and in my head, I, when can I say this is really what I, I really am an artist, but when can I say this is really what I am? It, but it just took up my brain always, always had. And I resented having to work 
but I never didn't do the work at night time in the studio. I was always in the studio at night time. And I knew then once I was up there full time, upstairs, that's it. This is what I am. I can say this is what I am. Yes. I do remember that. And did you feel that when you were actually working in, say, in the arts club or other jobs, that, that you couldn't really admit to yourself that you're an artist? Yeah, but I was. I really, yes. looking back on it, I was. In yeah, fact, that was harder work than this. Do you know, it was harder work than this. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, I was younger, though, too, do you know? But, like, uh, even when the boys were smaller, waiting until they went to bed and then going into the studio. Mm, tough. Yeah, but I never didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Did yeah. the studio come towards the end of your working career? No, the studio was, um, no, long before it. I got a friend to uh, convert the garage into mm. a studio. Say, my old kitchen was in the apartment yeah. and you'd step <clears> down <throat> into the garage. You know, it was the classic semi-detached mm. house. Yeah. You'd step down into the garage and, um, yeah, he just took out the up and over door and put in a window. And then that uh, we put a carpet rug down on top of the concrete floor, and that was the studio, and it was brilliant. Th this lovely photograph that we, we saw outside there, of you, oh, Trina said, were you a model? One. Yeah. Did well, you do a bit of modelling? I did. It wasn't. That I did a bit of modelling. I came home on holidays um, every year to see my mother, really. Uh, and there was a photographer who stopped me in Grafton Street. And I was twenty one or twenty two, and you know, I said, "Can I do?" Can can we can I take some pictures of you or something like that and then, and I ended off just for that summer holiday doing a cover of Woman's Way or something and doing um, an ad on TV. So, but then I was heading back to Spain, which is what I did, and back to yes. my boyfriend who who later became my husband. So right. that was so so that summer, mm. yeah, I did. Do you ever go back to Spain? I go every year to Spain. Every year. Every year without fail, I go to Spain. Okay. Yeah. Um, to the I, same place that you lived? Not the place I lived. No. Uh, where I lived, I lived in Ibiza, but before it became a, a tourist resort. Yes. There wasn't one hotel on the island. Really? When I went to live there. Yeah. And um, there was one, sorry, there was one. But there was no tourism. No. But there were a lot of hippies. So that's how I got into that kind of... So were you a genuine hippie? I was the real thing. The real the, thing? Yeah, for 14 years. Wonderful. And somebody said to me once, and I think it is the truth, he said, to, a Spaniard said to me, um, of all the lies, it was the most beautiful, which, which it was because tourism eventually came in, everything changed, little by little it changed. The tourism came in, the uh, people taking photographs of you in the street and you'd have been there, you know, with the dress down to the ground and all that. Um, my mother used to come over and see me and initially she thought this was an awful way to live but in the end she understood it very well because she'd grown up in Kerry because I lived out in a house way out in the country that had no electricity, no running water. I mean it was the real thing uh, if you could call it that but it didn't last because the rest of the world took over and the island became a big tourist resort and but there are still pockets there that are wonderful. Oh, really? Oh, there, oh, there are, yes. Yeah. And the, the old city there is fantastic. Mm. And they, they haven't wrecked it. They haven't been allowed to wreck it. Uh, but I suppose I've, two, uh, I, I've been back to Ibiza maybe four or five times. The woman who was my best friend there was a French woman. And she was married to a Spanish artist who was a very good friend of my husband. She, I remain very good friends with her. And she lives on the mainland directly opposite Ibiza. Uh, beside a little town called Denia and I, I go and stay with her every year Do you? and I have another very good friend uh, Judy Kelly who yeah. was uh, also married to a Spaniard and lived in Ibiza for a while and she lives in Bilbao now so I go over to her she comes over here yeah. so I've uh, maintained contact with my uh, husband's family well his sister so I go and see her every year I go to Spain every year without fail yeah I love the culture, I love the people, I love the music. And of course you have the language. So I have the language, yeah. What time of year do you go? I tend to go in September. September yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This year I want to go, I want to go to Barcelona, which I love too. Yeah. My, um, my second son, Tommy, he did a, he was doing a PhD and when he was doing that, he was living in Barcelona at the time. It was fabulous going over. Yeah. So I go to Barcelona, I go down to Valencia where my husband was from and then I go down to Denia to Mich my friend Michelle. This year, another, we haven't been for a while, we get the boat and then yet we go over to Ibiza and we spend just two or three days 
driving around Ibiza, back to our old haunts, yeah. you know. Fantastic. Yeah, we're Fabulous. both long-time widows, yeah. Yeah. and um, but a lot of memories. They were very formative years. I was 17 when I went there, mm. and 31 when I left. Formative years, exactly. They were the formative yes. years, yeah. yeah. You never let go of that tree, you don't. You don't, really, yeah, you don't. And friends that you make then mm. are friends for life, you Do know. Do you come back then with fresh eyes and a kind of fresh uh, approach to your work? Probably not to my work, because my work has always come from here. Mm. Um, uh -huh. I wouldn't have been doing animals, I don't remember doing them, no, uh, when I was in Ibiza. Um, I used to do cats now that I think of it. I used to do cats, yeah. Uh, no, the work is actually more from Kerry. The work is things like hairs and that that you see on the side of the road when you're down in Kerry. You feel so privileged, you know, to, so privileged to be able to see that animal. Um, so there we go. Uh, anybody who'd like to make a comment, please uh, unmute yourself. Okay, and uh, we can we can have a wee chat. So yeah. did you enjoy that? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nerve wracking for me. Really, it can be quite nerve wracking watching yourself, you know. Of but uh, I hope um, I hope everybody else enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure they did. I'm sure they did. And listen, man, many thanks to your sons who who have been fabulously supportive. Great. And have helped yeah. out hugely with, with the whole thing. Yeah. Um, the boys are great. Yeah. The boys are great. And Daniel, who composed that first. Daniel's uh, a wonderful, he's famous. a jazz musician, but he's also... Oh, is uh, he? Yeah, he is. And he's also a wonderful Spanish um, flamenco player, yes. Spanish classical yes. music. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And and Tommy also was great help in terms of the, the editing, getting some of the pictures together and so on. Digging Tommy into the archives. Uh, does art himself, yes. Yeah. Now, Pamela says we can't unmute. Oh, thanks, Pamela. You're probably right, uh, because I think I tried to stop that. Now, Pamela, you should be able to do it now. Could you try? Okay, yeah. 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 Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, How are you? Yeah. Great, thanks. I just... Do uh, not adjust heating system. Pardon? I oh, no, I mean, I'm, I'm in the Toronto Guthrie Centre, so... Oh, that's... is that what you're... Ah, right. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, I just I know your drawings, Margot, yeah. but your paintings are magnificent. I've never seen them before. Really, oh, thank you very much. Really yeah, really thank you. Good. I'd love to be able to paint like you. <laughs> I sure you can. I yeah. I'm looking forward to going back and paint. I keep saying I'm going back to paint. Yeah, yeah, no, but, it's um, beautiful. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Interesting life and interesting. Um, yeah, your your time in Spain was. Uh, I'd say very, very interesting altogether. I had a huge effect on the rest of my life, quite uh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. It was wonderful. And as I said in the, that uh, documentary of all the lies, it was the most beautiful. It was magic at the time. You know, it was quite innocent at the time. But um, yeah, it all went wrong in the end. But it was fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but the, the, the whole uh, kind of hippie period as well. I like when you when when I go 
back to Spain or to, to anywhere and you're looking at people on the beach and that and you think to yourself, these were the same people, these hip, like the older people that are on the beach, yeah. they have been through the same period and you kind of yes. forget about that, that they've lived through the same thing. It was was it was kind of just the end of Franco era as well, wasn't it? Well, I was there when Franco died and I was there for all that upheaval um with uh in the Cortes, you know. Um and when the king came back, I was there for all of that. And in fact, because I had no electricity, but we had a I had a TV, a black and white TV in the house working on the car battery. So I can remember watching all all that unfolding uh from my house in Ibiza. Um mm. Yeah, there was. It was. It was a great time. It was a great. There were so many experiences at that time. So, um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful, really. Great freedom as well, wasn't there? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And because it was an island, it was very contained. You know, um, I only ever left the island to come home to see my parents, uh, once a year. But apart from that you didn't leave the island, you know, and and there weren't that many people there. So it was quite special at the time. Gorgeous. Well done anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Thanks, Pamela. Yeah. Anybody else like to make a comment? Yes. I remember, I yes. remember um, uh, Marianne. Yeah. Sorry, Marianne. Yeah. David, I'll come back yes. to you. Yeah, sure. Uh, no, just to say it's a lovely film. I, I sort of recognised the, the exhibition I was there. Yeah. at the um, the opening so it's a, but it's, it's very nicely done with the sort of the music behind the drawing and yeah this gives it sort of poetic kind of um so really nice yeah lovely a big big, big compliment sure. i mean i know most of the things so i'm not you know it's i don't sure. have any questions but yeah it's a lovely film i must say it's really thank you, Maria. thank you Hope yeah. to see you soon. I'll see you soon. Yeah. 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 I'll text. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Marianne. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think I should give a special mention to Juno. Oh, um, Juno. Yeah. Who, who was a, the the lovely little girl in red? Yeah. Yes. Who's who's an, a little fairy, really, isn't she? <laughs> yes. In fact, I'm going to pick her up now. Yeah. After this, I'm going to pick her up, and we're going into the Solomon, so she can see yeah. the show in the Solomon that opened the other night. And um, yeah, she's very sweet and very precious to me. Yeah, absolutely. She's very great. Nice. Yeah. David, did you want to say something? Yeah, what a lovely, lovely film, Margot and Alan. Congratulations Thank Alan to both for that. of you. Yeah. Well, both of you, it was just beautiful, absolutely poetic and beautiful. I was just <clears throat> enthralled by it and by your son's uh, music. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, very talented. But then why would I be surprised, you know? The apple doesn't oh. fall far from the tree, does it? You're very good. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember the time in Spain. I was living there myself, Margot, when uh, Franco died, and he kept yeah. on dying. He died and died and died. That's it took him eight weeks yeah. to die. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody say mucho sangria, mucho sangria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it was, was funny. A strange time. It was a strange time. You know? Yeah, we didn't know strange. how it was going to turn out. No, <clears throat> that was great. And you talked about electricity, no electricity. No electricity, no. For seven years, that, like no electricity. The, the, the place that we were staying in had electricity, but it was so badly installed that there were two uh, naked wires outside yep. flushing in the wind. And when they yeah. when they got blown together, oh, sparks flew, I tell you. <laughs> Very well, somehow lucky. Living, living like that is okay in a warm climate. Yeah. I wouldn't do it in Ireland, but it was no, you, you living couldn't. in Spain. It, it was great. But it's I have my I lived in that house with my children with no electricity. You yeah. Know? So, but no, and I wouldn't do it now either. <laughs> too old for it. But, sure, would uh, not. No. It's too cold here. It's too to, cold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were very courageous to do without electricity. Really, you were. It was part of the. Like, we just found this lovely old house and. Yeah. Uh, to, to get that house, we had to take it as it was, and there yeah. was no electricity and no running water. So we sorted out the water eventually, but the electricity never, never got sorted. Yeah, yeah. but they're not great electricians in Spain at that time, anyway. 
Not they the fry now, it. though. I mean, they're, they've they are now, yeah. They are. They, they are. even it's have right. plumbers now. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a yeah. wonderful country, David. It's a really it's, wonderful country. It is. It's absolutely <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, I spent a lot of my life there. Loved it. There's, there's many yeah. an artist who started their life without electricity and running water. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> so, some the of whom are majority. with us today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some are still definitely. living without electricity and water. Oh, no, no, not now, but they, were, okay. they started out that way. Um, <laughs> there's Carol. She's got no electricity or water. <laughs> <laughs> it does remind me of a time, and we, we'll come back to you in a second, um, that I was down, myself and Trina were down in uh, Kinsale, and if you know Kinsale, you'll know of Charles Fort, which is a huge yeah. star yeah. fort there. And it used to be inhabited by hippies back in the day. And it was quite a commune there. Yeah. And anyway, we were bringing our children to visit uh, this, this wonderful place. And up drew a, a very fancy chauffeur-driven uh, car, uh, out of which stepped uh, a designer couple and their designer children from America. And they were approached by a tour guide who said, uh, good good afternoon. Would you like me to show you around? And he said, "Hey, no man. I used to live here." <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Anybody else like to say a few words? I have to leave you, so let me say goodbye, Margot. Bye, Alan. Bye, everybody. Yeah. I have to bye, go. Bye, got, we've got bye, guests. David. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thank you. Bye, David. Okay. Hi, Margot. Uh, anyone else there? Uh, hi. Carol, yes, I can. Yes, that was superb. I'm dying to get my paints out now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Me too. I'm a fan of Mar uh, Miguel Barcelo. Bar Barcelo, yeah. very much so. Yeah. Yes, and absolutely. You know, I was going to uh, uh, my brother-in-law's anniversary. I said, "What could I get him for the library?" You know. Yeah. And I got him a beautiful hard backed book. Oh, um, yeah. About do you yeah. know what? If I go back and go to swipe it, because I think it's just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have three of them here. I have three yeah. books on Barcelo here. I, uh, I, yeah, fantastic I painter. Oh, he's brilliant and very yeah. inspirational and very free. I love that. And I love yeah. I love what you do. As I said, it's the soul when you put the little dot in the eye, the yeah. white dot in the eye. Did you know uh, Ted Jones at all? He used to go down to paint. In Carrasivin, he was married to a Dutch lady. Self taught. I don't think so, no, Carol, no. Not really, not really. But listen, it's super, and you're looking great. And the grandkids just are oh, good. good. Yeah, and I've another one now too, since then. Um, yeah, lovely little Enjoy. girl. Another girl. Enjoy. I will. I am enjoying I'm enjoying them immensely. They're brilliant. Thanks, Alan. Thank you very much, Carol. And the person Thanks. I was referring to, the, the well known artist who started out his life without electricity or running water has just left a comment and it's Tim Goulding Tim five Goulding. years without electricity <laughs> yeah. in West Cork yeah. in the 60s and 70s Wow, it's a cold place to be without electricity but still I understand it perfectly it's, yeah, 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 yeah You didn't miss it, nobody had it, like none of my friends had none of my friends are. had telephones yeah. you know, so yeah. you didn't miss what you didn't what you didn't have around you, you know? no, but you sure so, as hell appreciate yeah. what you have now Oh, well, yeah, no. I used to love coming yeah. home on holidays to my mother and switch, pressing a button and the light came on, or, or the washing machine. Yes. They're the things you really appreciate when you didn't have them. But I always went back to Spain. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Trassa says, I remember Margot well as secretary of the arts club. She was very efficient and helpful. I love her work and the film is superb, Trassa. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Trassa. Um, uh, Fanula Lanigan says... Margot was a breathtakingly beautiful person and artist. Yes, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, okay, anybody else like to come in? Don't be shy. Hi, hello. Yes, hi, Maria Gabriella. Hi, hi. Um, congratulations, Margot, for your paintings and drawings. Beautiful. I, I wanted you. to ask you, why did you decide to go to Spain? You were in, in your late teens. Oh, I know. Look, it just goes to show decisions you make, you know, on a whim can have such a huge effect in your life. I was going to, my intention was to go to the College of Art. And my, I was very young. I was only just 17 doing my leaving. And my uh, art teacher persuaded me to wait till I was 18 and, and apply for the scholarship to the College of Art. So I persuaded my mother to let me go abroad for a year. And sure, I was only there in three, less than three months when I met 
Miguel, my husband. Uh, so that was that, you know, that was ah. love. I wasn't coming back. And, ah. uh, you know, he, he died a long time ago, but but we had three ah. sons together. Ah. So that, that it was a whim, you know, ah. and I never got to the College of Art. Mm. Never got there. Did, did you meet Miguel in Ireland or? No, no, or? I met him in Ibiza. I met him in Spain. Ah, you went I to, to Ibiza Spain. and? I but, met him. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose Ibiza? Well, I went to Valencia initially. And in fact, I met him in Valencia. Uh, ah. He was from that, that city. And then we just went over to Ibiza on the boat mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it just seemed magical. So we stayed. Mm. But I was it was it was a whim, you know, to do that, to spend a year. And yeah. my mother expected me to come back and do the scholarship to the College of Art, but it never happened. Uh -huh. So anyway, uh -huh. I've no regrets. Do do you ah no I was going to no. ask you if you regret no. not having been to the College of Arts, but I think I would have liked to I would have liked to have studied and and then by going to college and that you build up relationships with other people who are doing the same thing as you. So Certainly, I wouldn't have done that. I would be much more of an outsider here than mm -hmm. than a lot of people who who all went to kind of college together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good, good. No. Another question. Uh, you uh, Have you done exhibitions abroad? You have done a lot in Ireland, but have you been... Uh, uh, abroad with no, I haven't had exhibitions. I've certainly sold a good bit abroad, and I would have been in the Amsterdam Art Fair with the Green Lane Gallery in Dingle, and I would have been in the Edinburgh Art Fair with the Blue Leaf Gallery. But um, no, I no, I haven't. Um, I haven't really looked for it either. But uh, uh -huh. no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. No. That's great. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. OK, a few, few other comments. Great drawings, Margot. Thanks for showing them to us. Danny, that's Danny Osborne, I'm nearly sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Colin Eaton, good. thank you, Margot. Wishing you continued creativity. It's always a joy to see your work, as I always see your hand and soul in the work, that vibrancy, uh, the hand and movement, uh, as well as the work. You are a wonderful person. That's from Colin Eaton. Uh, Margie Dunn, love your vibrant work. Thanks for sharing. Very good. Thank you very much for that, Margie. Anybody else now want to come in? Marco. Yep. Yeah. Hi. Off you go, Aliko. Hi. Yeah, Aliko. Hi. 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 How are just you? your life in Ibiza sounds just idyllic. I know difficult with the electricity and that, but yeah. absolutely, especially in the, the world now, the way it is, yeah. it's, it's just idyllic and, you know, hippie and music and art. And yeah, it was great. It, it yeah. was great. Yeah. yeah. But it changed, like tourism took over yeah. and like what Ibiza is now party island and has mm -hmm. been for a long time. But it wasn't then, do you know, yeah. it was, really wasn't. It was, there was one hotel. That was it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And your mother was stunning looking woman. No wonder you were model material. <laughs> <laughs> my mother was in a class of her own and, and she died far too young, uh, as did my father, like, you know. Yeah. They both died very young and uh, they were dead. By the time I came back to live in Ireland, they were they were dead and I was still a young woman, you know. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I miss her. I still I miss her all the time. Of Absolutely. Course. She had a big effect on my uh, she had a big effect on all of us, you know. Yeah. Yeah, she was yeah. And great connection to Kerry is because of her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Kerry's great. And Daniel is fantastic. Daniel is brilliant, yeah. Oh my God, yes. yeah. yeah. And have him playing in the gallery was superb. Well, you see, that was a habit too, because I think he played at the first exhibition solo show I had, which was 2002, I think, um, in the Blue Leaf, which was in Fairview at the time. And yeah. I, I asked Daniel to play. And then it became kind of like a suspicion, you know? Well, Daniel played at the last one, he better play at the next one. <laughs> so he plays, he, he opens every exhibition. It's just suspicion on my part but I really love to have him that support I love to have him play yeah, yeah absolutely beautiful. and your work is absolutely stunning stunning oh, fabulous thank work you. thank you very much thank you I hope to go to the gallery the next time now you're showing I'm in France at the moment but the next oh time... look at you look at you <laughs> yeah do okay well thank you very much that was fabulous thank you Alico thank you thank you very much thanks Alico uh Tim Goulding is also a big fan of your work he says oh, Tim thank you and Morris Quillen, Morris Quillen and says, do you ever work from the Natural History Museum? 
I don't. I did actually go in there years ago, mm. and I think I had my grandson with me, and I went in to draw um, the hair. I can remember there being a hair there. Went in to draw the hair, and at the time, the the grandkids at the time were young. Also, he was very young. My eldest grandson was very young, and it was just too distracting. And I never got to go back. You yes. know, and um, I no, and I showed really, but there's something quite sad about dead animals too. So. Um, no, I've never gone back. It's no. true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, it's Kitty here. Hello, Kitty. <laughs> I How have a you? blank screen and my face, so I think I'm speaking. Anyway, Margot, yeah. I found it really emotional. Um, I was in that house in Aditha, maybe. That's right. You were. 40, wow. 45 years ago. That's so, right, um, Kitty. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, yeah, I loved know. it all. Yeah. yeah. It's I, a remember, real I remember, I remember you your life. <laughs> it is a very good friend of my sister's and I remember you coming over with Eileen. Yes, I remember that trip on holidays. It was a, diff a very different world, wasn't it? It Kim? was a very different world. Yeah. yeah. I remember I had a pound of butter for you in my yes. rubber sack and it melted all over my clothes. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I remember the dogs. Yeah. yeah. But um, I also love the Kerry with Margot. Um, it just is a lovely thing to have of your life. Mm. It is lovely, you know, um, it's like a comfort blanket. It, do, it doesn't matter for, for different people, it's a different place. And it's not to do with, with the place for each person. It's part of your own memory. So it is a comfort blanket to go yeah. back, yeah. you know. I also think in having that film as a record is beautiful and yeah. your art is amazing. Oh, so privileged to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kitty. Talk soon. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Kitty, for that. Pity we could see you. I don't know why why that was, but anyway. I can see her. I can see myself. Can you? But, oh. Yeah, and I can see Kitty. I'm talking the blank one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can okay. see her. Yeah. All right. H Helen Farrell says, natural and so full of, mu of movement. Absolutely beautiful video, Margot and Alan. All the very best. Thank um, you. Colin adds, great response to the Natural History Museum. Your animals and drawings are always very much alive. The energy. <laughs> mm. Yes. Uh, is it Mary? Mayor. No, it's Mayor. Mayor. Hi, Mayor. Hi, hi, Margo. Hi, hi Mayor. I just wanted to say thank you so much. Oh. It was really, really beautiful. And um, just hearing about your life in Spain and being a hippie, I know what that feels like. Yes. That, and I know how influential a time like that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your paintings are absolutely stunning. Just, it's blown me away. I'm, I'm so moved. I'm so emotionally moved by it all. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I, I wanted to know, like, if that film is still accessible somewhere, you know, if I can see it again or tune into it again anywhere, oh, is yeah. it accessible? Sure. Well, I can answer that if you like, um, Mayor. It's, a, it's going to be on YouTube. Oh, um, right. The Artist Well has a YouTube channel. So oh, if yes. you go onto, the, in, onto YouTube and Google or search uh, the art as well, it'll come up there first. It's actually yeah. as uh, coming up as a premiere at 12 noon today. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. oh my gosh, so congratulations. You'll, you'll be able to see that uninterrupted <laughs> yeah. um, in, in yeah. all its glory. It's just... and, and it'll be there forever, yeah. Yeah, it'll it'll be there forever, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really, this has been wonderful this morning. Margo, oh. your work is stunning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm very moved by that. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, anyone else before we call it a day? No? Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, let, let me ask you one final one and then before before we wrap up. Um, Margo, you, your, your influences seem to be very much centered on Kerry. And I think yeah. it's wonderful that that the sort of the family tradition of Kerry has maintained right down to your grandchildren. Yeah. Um, is, is this something that if you missed it, you, you, you literally probably couldn't paint. You really need that influence and that solitude and that, you know, yeah. lush green and the field and everything like that. I, I really don't know, wouldn't know how to answer that because I would imagine if it wasn't Kerry, it would be something else because I was painting in Spain. Yes. But um yeah, I I don't know is the truth. Uh 
yeah, Kerry's, uh, I have just a huge emotional kind of response to Kerry, but a lot of that is to do with losing my mother very young too. And, and uh, you know, the fact that we go, myself and my sister Eileen, we go every year without fail. Uh, mm. And we have a great time together and we always go to the same places and, you know, drive around Valencia Island and we go over to the field where my mother's house was. It's yes. like a pilgrimage, but um, I love it. I just love mm. that connection. Absolutely love it. Um, very good very yeah. good yeah no that's good okay unless there's anybody else like to pop in now before we go no no okay all right listen thanks everybody for for joining us um this morning uh it's been wonderful to to hear from you and also uh, you know the comments made to margo i think was, was, was were, were lovely too um i'd particularly like to thank tommy and daniel yeah, and michael too. yeah i'd like um, to thank tommy too because he put a lot of work he He's, sure did yeah, he's he's an artist himself, and uh, he's done a postdoc now writing about art. So yeah, yes. I I appreciate very much the help he gave. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, yeah. all all, of, all three of them. Yeah. And um, so next week, uh, I know we, we we try and do this every second week, but I have two consecutive weekend or weeks coming up weekends, um, and my next one, I'm delighted to be joined by Breed Nocton, and she's an award winning actress. And has acted in when she starred. She was a main character and an award uh, winning for that in Frank uh, and Rosha, an Irish film or a film in Irish, I should say. Uh, and also she was in the Banshees of Inishiran, um, several uh, stage plays um, and has a, had a very interesting career, continues to have a very interesting career. So she'll be joining me next Saturday and uh, looking forward to that. So look again, thank you all, Margot especially. Thank you very much for, for all, thank you. and thank for putting you, all the time in, into that uh, film. Yeah. And I, 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 I hope it, uh, it was worth it for you. No, it'll be lovely to have it. It will be lovely right. to have it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks you. everybody. Thank Take you. Bye bye. See you bye. next time. Bye.